love for the miraculous. Love for the miraculous. If you want ridicules to end, then walk in the miraculous. Love is a major catalyst in living in the miraculous. In 1 John 4, 8, the Bible declares, it said, He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. God is not faith. God is not hope. God is not prayer. God is not fasting. God is not healing. God is not prophecy. God is not word of wisdom. God is not word of knowledge. But God is love. Therefore, to walk in the miraculous, to enjoy the supernatural, you must walk in love. Because God is a miracle God. He doesn't struggle for miracles to happen. And if love is nature, then I have to walk in love to carry that kind of results that God gets. So here. The dimension of the miraculous you will operate is determined by the degree of your love. Your love for God will give you access to the depths of insights in his word. And when you have insight in his word, you naturally command the supernatural with our sweat. And I see someone get into that dimension after now. Shout it loud, amen. Shall they believe in amen? In John chapter 15, verse 9 and verse 10 and verse 20, Jesus speaking said, As the Father had loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. In verse 20, he said, For the Father loved the Son, and showeth him all things that he himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than this, that ye may marvel. This virtue of love must be in you before you can flow in the supernatural and before you can flow in the miraculous. Now hear me, people of God. A man called David in the Old Testament. This man was a king but could see about the coming of Jesus Christ. He prophesied about the coming of Jesus Christ. If you read the book of Psalms. And God spoke something about him. He said, this is a man after my heart. He loved me. And in Psalm 89, verse 20 to 23, he said, I have found David my servant. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. The holy oil anointed him does not mean olive oil. So you don't get confused. He's talking about the anointing of the Well, God you know, is not, not talking about carrying oil to a point, he said. That's not what he's talking about. Because some people say, oh, God said, I don't So when you pour oil to on my head, I'll be like David. No, he said, I have found him. Listen, there are people who are looking for God. You know, you can look for God and miss him. But God can't look for you and miss you. But when your heart, you walk in love, God locates you. And when God locates you, you get your location. He said, I have found David, my servant. I look for him. I got him. With my holy oil, have I anointed him. <laughs> With whom my hand shall be established. My arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall be the son upon him. Because this man works in my kind of life. Not the son of wickedness. I will beat down this force for his face. And I will plague them that hate him. When you walk in love, listen, listen, you don't know what you're missing, walk in hatred. Life story, Bishop Edipo said, he was preaching sometime, listen, and a woman sighed in disparity. This woman, physical, like physical stone was in her womb. So it was difficult as a woman to have any relationship with her husband. She 
She went from church to church, place to place, thinking it was an attack from the devil. And the man of God who God opened his eyes said, there was a man of God you despised. And you eased when the man was speaking. Until that man prays for you. Forget it. She now thought, I said, oh, it's Oedipo. She now looked for him and got to him. He didn't know that that happened. I prayed for her and ended. There are people who don't pray against enemies. God fights them. When you walk in love, you walk in God. And when you walk in God, who can insult you? You can, listen. Not once, not twice. I've seen people come to me and say, sir, in my heart, I despised you. And from that day, my life turned upside down. I don't need to know. When you, you just walk in love. Just what? what? Just walk in love. He said, I will beat down the force where I will plague them that I hate. Do you know David's wife who despised him was plagued? His own wife. Micah. For despising David when he was dancing, God plagued her. That is how much when you love God. Even if your brother insults you, God will deal with him. People who love God, people don't know what they're carrying. Just love God. Let people say, I will deal with you. God will say, you deal with this man. Forget. I will show you that he's a love of me. That when church does not mean everybody is your mate. He said, I speak to Moses face to face. You. Okay, come this way. There are people he speaks to that you are born again does not mean you are the same with some people. Even in the same church, even in the same service group, you are not equal. Even in the same choir now, you are not miss. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That somebody sitting by your side does not mean he's your mate. No, no, no. He don't know his relationship or relationship with God. But walk in love. Walk what? When you walk in love, you walk in God. And when you walk in God, whoever wants to walk against you is in trouble. So I hear. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. God located him and anointed him. Now look at Jesus for instance. Say, Jesus was anointed without measure. He was anointed without measure. That's John 3, 34. And Mark 8, 1 to 2, 7 to 8. Look at something. See how love is powerful for, for the anointed. In those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat. Did you hear that? Jesus called his disciples unto him and saith unto them, I have compassion. Compassion is compound passion. Is the plural. When you, you know, you say this man is so passionate. He said this is a compound passion. He passion has plural. It's compounded passion. Passion that is compounded. Compassion. He had so much love for them. On the because they had not been with him three days and had nothing what? That was what moved him. And verse 7. And they had a few small fishes and he blessed and commanded to set them also before them. So they did eat and were filled. And they took up of the broken meat that was left. How many? There were 4,000 people he fed. You know why it happened? His compassion on humanity was what provoked the release of the supernatural for the feeding of the 4,000. The moment he had compassion, the miracles just began to happen because compassion triggers unction and unction will release the supernatural. We can't taste the manifestation without sweat. Now hear me. God cannot anoint you for wealth if you don't have compassion for the poor. You want to walk in the miraculous? If you don't have love for the poor, he can't anoint you for wealth. If you don't have compassion for the sick, he can't anoint you for healing. When I see a sick person, it's as if I'm sick. I can't stand somebody sick. Once somebody is sick, everything in me reacts. God healed this person, whichever way. When somebody is poor, because I've gone through the root of poverty, everything in me reacts. Oh God, this person can't be that. Most I want to tell you, teach you on prosperity, it's not because I'm teaching you. No, I want to come out of poverty. 
Because I have, that is not the best road to follow. When someone is poor, everything means say, can't you see what I'm teaching and put it to practice? Put this thing to practice and come out of poor. I'm not talking because I hate you. I just said, listen, come out of poverty. It's not a good place to stay. Poverty. You don't understand. Though. Some of you have not tasted poverty. Oh. I don't think you have tasted it. Have you tasted poverty? No, you have not. You have not. If you've tasted poverty, you won't go there. Poverty. It makes even your relations to deny you. They say, is your brother? Say, uh, it's more than my mother, I think they are. <laughs> I show you, brother. It's more two of you are bearing the same name. Uh, the name is that his own is different from my own. We are not the same company. But just be rich, that's it. They will say, even if you don't tell you, say, do you know that man and me are related? We are very related. But then why are you not asking the same name? No, our grandfathers decided to ask different names. That's how poverty is bad. The same mother is different with you can tell you that you are not the same parents. But be rich. You see people. Somebody came, wrote, took genealogy of about 14, my peers saw it, about 14 generations. He, he, he did it like, you know, when you read, this one began this, this one began this, this one began this. He, he, he drew it, this began this, then came to my own generation and said, this began this, so we are connected by this to began this. <laughs> So I gave it to my peer. I said, see, he said, do, do you know we are related? I said, okay. He went to Abuja. Somebody ran after me. He said, do you know this person? That I'm the sister. We are related. I said, no problem. But I can tell you some 30 years ago, I never had a relationship. I, I didn't have any brother. <laughs> no sister. Even when they saw me, they said, you're I'm going relate. <laughs> after today's meeting, the war will identify with you. I prophesy on someone. Distant relations will use your name as a place of point of contact. It is your name they will use as identity. I speak it, it will happen this same year. In the name of Jesus, they will make reference to your name. It is your name that will be the landmark. Shout a better amen. So you have to change your nature for you to have a glorious future. Until you begin to operate in love, you cannot command the supernatural. That's supernatural for those who walk in love. Now in Matthew chapter 22, 36 to 40, that's a key scripture. He said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? <laughs> Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as what? Thyself. On these two hang all the laws and prophets shout hallelujah. Thou shall love the Lord thy God with everything inside you. Mark 12, 30. With thy strength. With thy what? That thing that make the world to know you. Use it to love God. That's what God is saying. And the resultant effect of your loving God is what produces the miraculous. Eyes have not seen. Yes, I've not heard. Neither has he entered the heart of man. What God has prepared for them that love him. First Corinthians 2 verse 9. He said, eyes have not seen. Yes, I've not heard. Neither has he entered the heart of man. What God has prepared for those who love him. You are a lover of God. Then he said, eyes have not what? That this God will do in your life. Even your relations will look at you and say, excuse me, is this our brother? After this day, your love will take you to that level. Shout the loud amen if you're a believer. So love is the master key to a world of signs and wonders. Love. Love. Fasting without love is hunger strike. Prayer without love is protest. There are many preachers who preach no love inside the preaching. If you don't give, you will die. You don't die. I'm telling you, you die. The people came to be blessed. They didn't come to die. He's angry with the people he's supposed to love. 
Let me say this to you. You become a sign and a wonder to your generation when you walk in love. Lovers of God are played out of this world. And they become the envy of their world. Anybody who loves God, people must envy you. Because you'll be getting the source. You will get the what? Are you hearing me now? You want to see things work with us with? Walk in love. Walk in what? When you walk in love, you become a partaker of God's nature. <laughs> and that guarantees an escape from the corruption that is in the world through supernatural manifestations. Just walk what? Now, God's nature is love. Is that true? Let me explain this to you. God's nature is what? What's the nature of God? God is love. His nature is love. So when I walk in love, I become a partaker of his nature. Do you understand now? Let me see this. <laughs> the Holy Ghost give me very strange illustration. Do you know if I go to a place where somebody is frying something like pin cake, which you call in this part of the world, and I stay with the person for too long, when I come out, everything on my clothes will smell it. I am a partaker of the nature of the one she's frying. True? There's a, there are kind of colors you wear, perfumes, that if you hug someone like this, the thing will drop on the person's clothes. You are a partaker of his perfume. True? Because you have a contact by nature with the person. God's nature is love. So when you walk in love, you become a partaker of his nature. So anywhere you go, they smell God. People smell you, they smell God. And whatever God carries is what you carry. <laughs> Second Peter 1.4, let me show it to you. It says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by this he man be partakers of his divine nature. What is divine nature? The nature of love. So when I be a partaker of this nature, look at it, I will escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. What are the corruption? Sickness, disease, poverty, lack and want. Name them. Now, when I partake of his nature, I don't pray these things will just live my life. I won't be sick. Listen. Sickness can't come to me because I'm a partaker of his nature. And I can't be poor because I'm a partaker of his nature. I can't fail because I'm a partaker of his nature. I just escape what the world is suffering because I walk in love. Then when you don't partake of those things, you're a miracle in the world. Whoever sees you, sees you as a sign and a one. You'll be the next sign to your world. That's how powerful love is. Love is a person and the person is God. So when you say, I love you, you're saying, I God you. And if you say, I love you, then you cannot love someone and hate the person at the same time. It means I'm giving you everything God has. So anybody say I love you, you must never hate the person because the two cannot work together. I love you. I God you. Now you get me? That's what he said to the man. Love your wife. God your wife. Give everything I have. My nature. My nature. My nature is compassion nature. My nature is the giving nature. My nature is the caring nature. So give your wife my nature. And the woman to give the man God's nature. But love is not only one side, it's both sides. But women think it's only man that will love. The Bible says you to love your husband. Read your Bible. So, you can only become a beneficiary of the supernatural when you become a partaker of his nature. And what's his nature? Love. What's his nature? Love. Because no matter what you're confronted with, when you walk in love, 
God will turn that situation around. And today, God will turn that situation around. Please, let's put on the nature of Christ so we can perform his supernatural function in this earthly realm. When you love God, I tell you, he will in turn love you. Just love God and he will, what? In turn love you. you hear what he said? In John 14, 21, 23. He that had my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. <laughs> and I will love him and will what? Manifest myself to him. Just love me, I will manifest. Can God manifest himself and be another person? Oh my God. He said, love me, I will manifest myself. I will show you that where I am. I will just be, make a wonder to your world. And verse 23 says, Jesus answered said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our... But that means your, you will be... Wherever you are, that's your residence. They will, they will decide with you. Then there are people who pray for miracles. There are those who they are miracles. They are what? When you walk in love, you don't pray. You are a miracle. You are a miracle. You are a miracle personified. Hello? Have I told you my secret now? No, you don't. And your love for God will make you to see God first. If you love God, you see God what? Seek you from the kingdom of God. And it's righteousness and all these things shall be what? Those who love God, put God first. Seeking him first will make you enter the realm of the supernatural. Seek you for the kingdom and all these things shall be added. So you enter the supernatural additions, increase and multiplication. Without sweat, without what? If you are not going to do it by power and might, they just come your way. This you can, your energy and strength can't acquire. It comes by you Putting him first. When you say I love God, it means I put God things first. Love God, though, because you know what I'm telling you? Very soon they will envy you. Ah, they will soon envy you. Because after the anointed, they will envy you. So toughen your skin. Toughen your skin because they will envy you. Well, the kind way God will bless you, they will have no choice. They will... If nobody's making oh, 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 they are not blessed. Yes, but I know you'll be blessed. Yes. So don't get they will they will envy you. There's no two ways. They will envy you because this year will not end. The world will envy you. They will forget that you are sometimes living in face me and face you. He said, draw nine to God, and he will draw nine to James 4 8. The more you love God. The more of his love you win. That's what I call it. The more you love God, the more of his love you win. James 4 8. Draw nine to me. And I'll draw nine to you. Draw nine to God. And he will draw nine what? To you. So the more you love God, the more of his love you win. So if you want to win God's love more, love him more. Increase your love for God, he increases his love for you. Increase your love for God, he increases his love for you. True? Mm. If you have children, is it not the child that obeys you more, you love more? Is that true? Just love God more, he will love you more. Love him more. Let your love to me to increase. And then God's own will also what? Love him. And when you, you just walk in the miraculous. You will walk in the what? You, you will not struggle for miracles to happen. Listen. People think that it's the rigorous fasting that I'm using for the healing. It's love. It's what? Somebody with pain. Anybody with pain? Somebody with pain. Pain of any kind. You have pain. Let me say this to you. Hold it. Look, I'm not going to see me. I, I walk in love and I know I walk in love. If you walk in love, you will know. You will know it's not that God knows the lie, you will know. If you love somebody, won't you know? So if you, if you walk in love, you will know. It, it's from these teachings, many of you are getting a revelation of love. 
You have pain also. Now just to watch me. I'm not going to pray. I'm not going to pray any prayer. I walk in love. See me. See where I sat down. Do you see where I sat down? Just sit where I sit, you'll be healed. Just sit where I sat. You know why I staggered? God's power is in that place. Get up. Get up. You are healed already. Do what you could not do. You'll be shocked. No pain. No pain. No pain. John 14. Listen. John 14. 21, 23. Bring it again. He that had my commandments I keep them. Is he that loveth me? And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will manifest myself unto him. Jesus answered and said unto him, If any man love me, he will keep my words, And my father will love him. And we will come and make our boat with him. So those who love God, he resides with them. He just stays with me. I don't struggle. So where I sat down, is God who sat down there. Because I walk in love. So when you walk in love, you walk in the miraculous. Are you going to when you walk in love, you see miracles. You, you become a miracle. No, it's not rigorous fasting, no. Is that what? You can fast 40 days and not walk in the supernatural. But you can't walk in love and not walk in the supernatural. Did I tell him to be healed? Did I tell him to be healed? Now listen, all of you who are sick now, including those on the screen, look at my face. Just look at my face. Look at my face here. Just look at my face. Put your eyes on my face. You on the screen, put your eyes on my face. Just put your eyes on my face. In Jesus' name. Now do what you could not do. You'll be shocked. You're all healed. All of you be healed. Do anything you could not do. Do anything you could not do. Now listen. When you walk in love, when you sit in a shop, when you what? When you sit in a shop, God sits there. That shop will be rocking with God. Bring your complimentary card. You. Now, I walk in love. I walk what? He grew here. <laughs> it's not because I'm a pastor. I walk in love. So God does not need to struggle to manifest through me. You want? Know yeah? It's a creative miracle here. She said since January this year, she's developed persistent pain in her right knee. The knee is even bandaged. She has gone to the doctor, taking several painkillers, but the pain has not stopped. But right here, immediately, for the first time since January, she can bend. You can bend no pains. Give Jesus that hand. Give Jesus. Now listen. Jesus, come down. No, just walk in love. It doesn't need to come down. It comes down through love. Jesus! No. Walk in love. It will just manifest through you. You will lay hands on sick and they will be healed. You get to a shop, you say, shop bless. The shop is blessed. You don't have to be a pastor. Just walk in love. Pastor, she shared with me that for over five years, she had been unable to bend her left knee. She for was over five years? For over five years. Do what you couldn't do for five years freely. You couldn't do that for five years? Huh? Yes, sir. You couldn't do that for five years. Five years, not five days. You're giving Jesus a hand. I told you this month, I will tell you my signal. Say, I want to know the signal of David. The signal of David is what? Love. It's not a. Uh, so, if you, you do like the mother, I mean, <laughs> it is not the. <laughs> it is love. Oh! It is what? Oh. Not oh. Just walk in love. And you will walk in the miraculous. Rise to your feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, love is a choice. Love is what? 
I can choose not to love no matter what I hear. I can what? It's a choice. It's a choice. Say what? Life is a, is a product of choices. If when someone is talking to you, you can choose not to listen. And so anytime you tire, you, you stop. You know, someone can be talking to you, you say, when you're tired, you go stop. I think they talk, talk. You can choose to be shocked. Sure. Your ears are physically open, but your mind is closed. He said, when he's tired, then go stop this talk when they talk. You have made a choice not to listen. You are present, to, but you are not there. There are people who have chosen never to love. No matter what they talk, they say, not my wife. She's unlovable. He has made a choice. Never. To love. Not my husband. My husband is unlovable. There's no unlovable person. They said, there's a witch or a wizard. That's the only people who are gone. I saw in the Bible said, suffer not the way to live. But every other person is what? The only people I saw God did not accept is the witches and otherwise. Every other person, no matter the weakness he has, is lovable. He said, with patience. With what? With patience. The person is a witch. That one is a different thing. So suffer not a way to live. That's the only place God says so. But there's nobody who's not lovable. Are you getting what I'm saying? I can't see a husband and wife sitting and say, I hate my husband. Something must be wrong with two of you. you do, two of you don't understand this book. This book, oh, you don't understand it. You know what? Love is loving who is unlovable. That's how I define Love is what? That's what the sport definition. Love is loving who is Just love the person who is unlovable. Are you hearing me now? That's love. <laughs> because we were unlovable, yet God loved us. We are in our wickedness. He died for us. So while we are yet, it's a scriptural definition. Why we are yet sinners. Not when we have repented. Why we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. So we were unlovable when he loved us. So when your wife is still misbehaving, telling you wicked man, bad man, short man, when you greet all. <laughs> Love him. Do what? In his shortness. <laughs> Alright. Just make a choice. Make a what? 